Today on the program, President Buhari suspends Ibrahim Mustafa Magu as the acting EFCC chairman. Rising cases of coronavirus among VIPs worry federal government as Nigeria records 575 new cases. Cross River accounting for five cases and later on the show, bandits kill 15 persons in Jagamji village, Basari local government area of Castina State. I'll be hanging out with Babaji De Kolade Otitoju and Cyril Abako is back on the show. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Thank you for joining us. Acting Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Ibrahim Mago, seems to be working on a hot coal as he now he has now been suspended by the presidency. Mr. Mago was detained at the first criminal investigation department area, area 10, Abuja, on Monday nights on the orders of the committee that also questioned him on Tuesday morning. A source in the presidency has now confirmed that Mago has been suspended pending when a decision will be taken on him. Today, yesterday, before we started the program, the information filtered in and it was about systematic, maybe he was invited, he was arrested, or he was called for an interview. But whatever it is, we have a clearer picture now. Now, since the time of Nuri Badu, we've had that at the end of the day, or before the end of their tenure, they are always embattled one way or the other. It's been five years and Ibrahim Mustafa Mago was not confirmed by the Nigerian Senate. He, was, he has been acting on acting capacity in the last five years. And we know some people in the presidency are not happy with this man. Now, a committee was said to be set up, led by Justice Ayo Salami, sitting <laughs> within the villa. What's up, Jide? What's happening? What's happening with Ibrahim Mago? Um. One thing is certain, every attorney general of the federation wants to have the FCC in his pocket. Uh, this is not the first time that we'll have this kind of situation. Um, Ribadu faced this kind of problem. Invariably, the moment a new government came into power, because it was a person job, uh, employed him. The moment the Gulo Jonathan regime uh, took off, he was sent. That's the Yaradua uh, regime? Uh, uh, I mean, Yaradua regime. regime. Yaradua. Okay. Um, he was sent to Okuru uh, to go and do a course. Um, he had his promotion uh, reversed, kind of demoted. So he faced so much problems until they eventually replaced him with uh, Aja Farida Waziri, um, retired AIG. The argument then was that um, Nuri Badu's rank was too low you know, for someone occupying that job. But the truth is, these people are politicians. How they see the EFCC is not how the rest of us uh, see the EFCC. They sometimes want to use the EFCC as a terror weapon um, to harass their political opponents, to save their, their political friends from possible jail time or harassment of any sort. So every government, every government wants to have a hold on the EFCC. But we cannot defeat corruption if the EFCC does not enjoy some measure of independence. independence. Because it's that measure of independence that will enable you to take decisions without fear of any form of consequences for the decisions that it has taken. No doubt about it. Even within the villa, within the presidency, many of them do not like uh, Ibrahim Magu. Remember, at that time when he was chasing um, confirmation, the, from within the presidency, amongst the staff of the president, they generated 
a small write up indicting him so that it will be difficult for the National Assembly mm -hmm. uh, to confirm him. At that point, if I were the president and I wanted Magu, I was the one who appointed Magu, I would have gone for the person who generated that uh, indicting write up and dismissed the person. If I was convinced that, look, I made the right uh, choice and Magu was, in my view, the best person at that time for the job. But the, the president didn't take any action. Because the 8th Assembly said it, said it that yes, there were Yes, no their hands were tied. You know? so, but it's convenient for yeah, us later. for us to abuse Saraki and abuse other people. Whereas from amongst the president's aides, yes. that letter was generated. Jesus wrote something so indicting. So it now, wasn't cleared. Now, can anyone still blame Saraki now? Anybody in his right senses, can you still blame Saraki for what's going on now? Because Saraki is out of the way. Mm -hmm. And from within this same presidency, we've had something similar to what was written that time, if not worse, hmm. against the same man. Yes. Coming at a time when you know the president had presented some names for confirmation. They knew that, okay, it could soon be time for the president to present hmm. uh, Magus' name. This is coming from time. the office of the And Antony the General. National Assembly at this time hmm. is much more friendlier to the federal government. To the, uh, the presidency. Family. To the president than the former one. So, to, in order to forestall his, uh, his confirmation on the job, this had to happen. Hmm. See, I don't know, maybe you've been following the process of uh, the attempt that we made to confirm Ibrahim Mustafa Mago and the cases, sensitive cases he has embarked upon, and um, those uh, politically exposed people maybe from the APC or the PDP, although people will say sometimes there's a tendency to be selective, but in all, the activities of Ibrahim Mustafa Magu. I think that they have been as controversial as um, his own emergence as acting chairman of the AFC has been. Uh, you know, because when he came in, acting chairman, then the presidency said they were going to send his name for confirmation. You know when that stinker of a memo came out, it was a national scandal and it was, it suddenly developed wings and just flew away. Nobody knew where it went. We didn't know if there was any serious intention to get to the latter of that issue and say, to, to be sure that this man is really innocent of all of these allegations. The fact, we, what we need to look at here is that certain accusations coming against the man who should be the arrowhead of government's anti-corruption war. When government's principal policy is a policy against corruption, it should not be seen as a light matter. This is not another political crisis. It, it, it's not another, another, another national issue. This, is, this matter should it's a be- big moral burden. It, it, it presents a serious, arguably the biggest moral burden on the government. And so if indeed the president believes that Mago can deliver the goods, and some of his own lieutenants believe that Magu is a, is a stumbling block in their way, then something has to give. But the fact is that for as long as you have left both, both interests to, to fester, sooner than later, the one will swallow up the other. And that's what we're seeing today. Now, the fact, you, are, you were asking me about Magu's, Magu's um, um, activities as, AFC, as AFC chairman. I may, I, I may score him a, a, around average. Because the fact is that if Magu left the AFC today, from my own disinterested observation, I do not think that he has left a clear-cut system in place by which Nigerians can judge any credible one corruption. Let me give an example. It was under Magu the term media trial became a national, uh, ent entered our national lexicon. No. Media trial. No, because it has no. always been there. But, always but been there, since no rebuttal. It gained, it gained, it gained, <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> It gained serious proportions. In the Where news we convicted, we convicted. Um, uh, what's his name? Tafaba Logu. No, even um, <laughs> the man at MPA. Uh, uh, Body George. But we convicted him. He even sued us before mm. the matter got who, to the point. Who went to the? There's, there's, there's a long list. That was a bigger, bigger, bigger issue. Issue. There's, there's a long list of them. There's a long list of them. He sued you us know? for one billion. <laughs> so, 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 so the question is, how did Mr. Magu, for instance, chart a new path? I, perhaps he has apologies who would say he, 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 he did deliver some good for them. But the fact is that today to tomorrow, this pattern of arresting people and looking for evidence, arresting mm -hmm. people and parading them before the media, mm -hmm. arresting people, 
the war on corruption is not. You saw how you you, you we, we we also had the FC was fighting Yahoo boys until the FBI came to assist them, and there was a whole world of difference. So the fact remains that we can look at it on, on uh, you know on um, from different pockets. A lot is wrong, but what is happening now is even more scandalous because you cannot use one wrong to correct another wrong. If what is happening is 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 a case of infighting in the presidency, then. I think that somebody needs to wake up to put a stop to it and separate and you know and separate apples from oranges. Okay, Jude, I think with the with the mentioning of the name of Ayo Salami, I had a, a kind of hope that look, it might not be a fit accomplished for Magu if he's innocent. It might not be railroaded into you know allegations that they can they are yet to substantiate. What I'm saying here is that if you can bring the caliber of Ayo Salami to come and lead a panel. Mm. <laughs> yes, it might not be in that office again. They might have succeeded in the achievement. But if he is not indicted, Ayo Salami will not indict him. If he remains uh, not guilty, he will not pass a not guilty vote for him. Or has the same Ayo Salami changed? Well, um, first and foremost, I don't know where the decision to detain him came from. Hmm. An administrative panel has no power to order anyone's detention. Hmm. So, a lot of oddities, oddities and aberrations happen in our country. Hmm. The truth is, until the FCC is truly independent, hmm. the man who heads the uh, organization cannot go so far. He still has to. If we imagine the successes recorded against Yahoo Boys, hmm. under Magu is the greatest in the history of EFCC. People like Invictus, the FBI admitted hmm. Hmm. that it was the EFCC that assisted they them. Come here, they come here. EFCC hmm. assisted the Invictus and others hmm. who were arrested hmm. back then. The EFCC provided the facts hmm. that enabled them to. Make those arrests. Awesome. Not only that, even Hush Poppy, mm. the EFCC has also gone to the point of providing some information about some of Hush Poppy's um, um, uh, uh, sidekicks and people who work with him mm. around here. Mm. So, and when you look at the number of convictions achieved, we never achieved. Conviction of political exposed persons until Magu came on the scene. Mm -hmm. the, the first idea. Jolly Uyame was he in jail. Of, number of past governors. Jolly Uyame, um, the uh, Darie, mm -hmm. even the one who was convicted recently, and then uh, his case, uh, Supreme Court, then uh, ordered uh, reversal because of procedural error. Mm -hmm. You know, that a judge made mm -hmm. that once you are elevated to another court, you should not. Go what's ahead what's to, uh, to continue the, the matter, you know. So that is that. In my view, we do not know some of the first available to Baba Ayur Salam. He's someone mm. that I respect so much, you know. And I have no difficulty asking him, Baba, what is it that you have at your disposal? But I'm aware that in this administration, sometimes, whether you are guilty or not, if the power people move against you, the powerful people want you out. They move against you, they will not wait until you are convicted before they kick you out of that job mm -hmm. and you have, will have no way back. I can give three examples. Three examples I can give. They, you are out of the way, you will never be able to come back. That is why, and when I remember what the governor of Kaduna said, some time ago, that the president told him that you, Magu, I will never sack you. That whatever they do, I can keep you in that office as acting uh, EFC chairman for as long as I want. Mm. Um, Erufai said that by his, uh, himself. Not that, not a, a press statement. He said it. That the president assured him that whatever the corrupt people do, I will keep Magu on that. And job. at the point that the vice president also confirmed to me, he so, told me that I already leave my lips. So if now I we are waiting. We we'll continue to. We are waiting. We are waiting for what will happen. 
Dirmagu buy houses for himself, as has been alleged. Let them prove that indeed he bought houses. Where are those houses? I know, for example, that he has only one house. Did he use third party to send them money? Let me tell you, mm -hmm. even that you have to prove empirically. Yeah. What, whichever way we look at it, if I sell, if I'm in position, it's not my enemies that I want to help. I want to help people that I know, people around me, not people that I do not know anything about them. Except we are deceiving ourselves as hypocrites. I remember someone asking the former governor of Sokoto State, um, Atayru Bafara, they said, they said, you sold government land to your friends. He said, oh, you expected me to sell to my enemies? <laughs> so if you identified a few people as friends of, no, uh, of uh, Ibrahim, Magu. Ibrahim Magu, among some of the beneficiaries of the houses that were sold, mm -hmm. You then need to confirm to us whether they fulfilled all righteousness mm. because they are Nigerians, mm. and the fact that they are uh, they are close to someone or they are someone's friend should not even disqualify them. Mm. The, uh, the one of the allegations that I found funny is the, allig the allegation that of insubordination mm. to the Attorney General of the Federation. Then it takes us back to what No Ribadu yeah, went through. You cannot. Mm. It, why did no the Badu had uh, have his issues with Ondoak and and the, and the rest of them then? Hmm. Because they so were saying, "Give me that file. Case. Give me that file. Uh, hmm. look, look, this case. I'm taking over this case. So, they, we need serious independence." Hmm. Sir, so on the final notes from Nuri Badu to Farida Waziri to Ibrahim Lamude to Ibrahim Mustafa Magu, all these guys they've been part of the system and they're all from the north and they're all retired. Or they are all um, policemen. They are not they're, they're not retired. Lamude is, is still there. I know. I know. I know. Mm. Lamude is still there. The so, uh, but they all have something in common. Going through the police and everything. Now, if we are looking forward now, suspended because from this suspension, I doubt if we come back to that seat. Mm. So, what should happen? I I think that if you want to have a credible one corruption we need to divest a body like the efcc bodies like even icpc that are the center of corruption mm. i think the president shouldn't even be the one to nominate the person for instance you know that divest the them from the issues countries. of federal character and so on we need to put the very best of the best in that place that's mm. what we need to do and i think that you know if if that alone will will uh, spell out our determination of intention mm. in in dealing uh, with with corrupt cases mm. the reality is that when we now for instance i think i i, I read a report just before coming on tv that the, if they are to ask the next person in line to take over maybe the secretary is a certain Olu Kayode also who is not an operative, you know, and so that they may have to fall mm -hmm. back to a certain northern again. But for, for us, I think what <laughs> we know, need Malami to do. has already nominated three persons. He has given he has three three gone ahead to nominate president. three persons. But this they're not going to follow so the that's, that's, that's what happens. <laughs> that, that's what happens. That's what happens. Yes, you know, the thing is, you, you, you complain about someone. Mm. You indicted someone in the right of, and mm. then proceeded to nominate those who should take over. Who does that? I you, you fostered a faith complete on him. But I am on what? the president. <laughs> what you see, we we oh, wow. we need a ray of hope in terms of being able to rein in this pattern because the chief law officer of the nation cannot become lawless. I'm telling you, oh, this is going to be is a running um, um, issue. Oh, We're well. going to catch up we'll with continue. this uh, in the next 24, 40 Today hours. Today now they've done absolutely nothing. <laughs> Yesterday they they were asking him general questions, no real investigation. Today they've told him go and get a, a personal lawyer because Roti Media Corps. Who is here? Yes, uh, uh, okay. well, no, they said, get a uh, personal lawyer. His lawyer is based here in Lagos. His lawyer is now going, going to, to fly him. So they've done two days now. We Nothing has do. been achieved. But, and, we, but we, we understand the pattern that we might not go back to the office. No, no, it's clear. It's clear. <laughs> that is, in fact, they never went this far. Hmm. So getting this far is a big achievement. And it's tied to politics of 2023. Hmm. This whole thing. Bye bye to Mustafa Ibrahim Magu, if he's so lucky. <laughs> <laughs> now, moving forward now, the high rates of positive cases of coronavirus among top government officials 
has now become a source of worry to the federal government, the secretary to the government of the federation, and the chairman of the presidential tax force on COVID-19, Boss Mustafa, raised this concern at the 49th Joint National Briefing of the tax force in Abuja yesterday. According to Mustafa, this has a direct impact on governance and the security of the nation, and still, on coronavirus, Cross River now has five confirmed cases of coronavirus, leaving behind its reputation as the only Nigerian state without any confirmed case of coronavirus. These five cases are the ones reported earlier by the Chief Medical Director of the University of Calabar Teaching Hospital. Ikbeme, Ikbeme. The truth prevails at, you know, at long last. Welcome back. If you are just joining us, we are reaching you from TVC News here in Lagos, Nigeria, and this is Journalist Hangout. We are looking at the cases COVID-19. We have 675 new cases and 654 deaths. Yes. Now, uh, this is something that we can't run away from and it's not something that you can't, you can't stop talking about because it has affected all you know, strata of, of our lives, everything that's affected. COVID has altered the status quo. And after COVID, I don't know what will happen. I, even after we survive COVID-19, many things about us will change. Mm. I expect um, us to take sanitation a lot more seriously. The uh, idea of washing your hands and not, not sleeping your finger into your nose at every mm. opportunity <laughs> has to change. Not touching Because the once you, it's worse when you put your finger in your nose because it goes right there through, through the airwaves and that is where it is most dangerous, you know. So you, you get infected easily. I'm sure that um, this thing will not go away easily. It's, it's clear now that it will not go away easily. But we have to be prepared. We have to take steps. This, as we said yesterday, um, the number of the dead is grossly, grossly under mm -hmm. um, reported. reported. Many of the people didn't even die in hospital. Many of the victims, many of them didn't die know. under NCDC management. At all. You know? A lot. Some died in private hospitals. So, some died at home. And some are dying in states where tests are being suppressed. Some are dying. Well, so when they die, at all. yes, they are not allowing well, they tests to happen because they are the deceiving COVID. themselves that oh, their states uh, does not have COVID. Look at what happened in Cross River. Samples will be submitted and then to be taken to Abakaliki where they, they had the uh, oh, well. test uh, facility, center. test center. The number of samples taken there will then reduce drastically before they get there. Mm. That's rigging. Mm. Mm. That's bare-faced rigging. Not medical to, rigging. To, to medical rigging. On ethical, on ethical practices. And that was why the doctors, Actually, the medical yeah. workers in the state said, no, we are going on strike. Mm. All kinds of things. You are going on strike unless COVID-19 is better managed in this state. How can, from like 20-something, so you just see only eight, just eight um, <laughs> samples will get to that point. <laughs> so governors deceiving themselves that, oh, they are COVID-free. Uh, it's something that has breached international boundaries. <laughs> what are you doing in your state that is different to what others are doing? <laughs> where people defecate on hills. Mm. My state, Kogi, when yeah. it comes to open defecation, is among the worst in the country. <laughs> is that sanitation? So you've done it better than Abuja. Abuja is the most beautiful uh, city in our country. Yet, there are people who have COVID over there. So we need to do something. Let's stop 
deceiving ourselves. I'm happy that Crossover debuted with five. <laughs> We've seen some states when they made their debut, it was just the one. It took a federal medical center. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's just like a loot here. Yeah. It's like an independent, no, uh, it's independent the from the state government. No, no. <laughs> the test still happened in Abakaliki. Hmm. Hmm. No, <laughs> this test still happened over there, and some of the staff, were, some of the victims were staff of the hospital. Damn. How do you rig it? <laughs> you so, so this is the thing. So for what benefits will any governor come out to say we don't have COVID? <laughs> this is God's own country. I ain't got COVID. <laughs> <laughs> no, I. My thinking would be that because. Governors enjoy immunity, um, but this is criminal behavior. It is not, it is beyond maladministration, it's criminal behavior. And so somebody ought to be put on trial when this is over, if we have the evidence and if yes. we, some, Actually, people died. Yes, uh, yes, somebody you know. ought to be put. You so see, true, true yes, the reality is this. When we, fa when, when we talk about the Nigerian national question, the way to move Nigeria forward, we ought to have a national policy or a national doctrine of consequences that anybody who does something that is harmful to the common good will face consequences. We see it in other countries. Mm -hmm. Look at Israel, for instance. Yes. After Israel triumphantly defeated uh, Lebanon in war in 2006, they put their, their, their PM on trial, mm -hmm. uh, Walmart. I think it's, uh, he was... He it's, was not, it's not... They've always put their leaders the, on track. You know, so there, it won't be anything special to, you know, to, to, to get it done. Mm -hmm. It is not only in terms of financial malfeasance that people should put on trial. When, when, clear, when there are clear breaches... When by your negligence... By your negligence, criminal you negligence... The of people. Lives are, 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 are being taken. Something drastic must be done to, 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 to put people on notice that, you know, like Delegua would say, Every evil deed done to man will be redressed. If not now, later. If not by man, certainly by God. Because no evil done to a fellow man will, will go unpunished. Mm. This is clear punishment. Assuming that the people who are doing this thing are on the receiving end. What are we coming for the leaders who are, who are, who are suppressing these figures? Mm. COVID is COVID. Uh, look. And it's not a death sentence. If you look at the global scale, um, Ayo, assuming that we had up to 15 million uh, uh, sufferers globally, you look at the recovery rate. It is a, it is, it is light years away from the number of deaths. Yes. So we have to celebrate, so not celebrate, but we have to evaluate, or assess what is going on on the, on, on the, on, on the side of life and recovery mm -hmm. over and above the side of yes. death. Yes. So we don't see any reason why. So does it, if you deceive yourself, does it mean that the virus will not do what, 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 what it is doing? One hundred and two. Yes. From you know? There's not, we've seen cases we are pregnant women with COVID. I haven't put into so there's nothing special about yes. it, anyways. We saw it in the news, there's, there's, so there's nothing special about it. If the, if it is there, you take you you know you take the right steps in dealing with it. I like what some governors did, okay. Even before they had COVID in their states, they began to create isolation centers. They began to create awareness. Mm. They began to you know send out jingles and so on. People should, if you want to fight COVID, one of the elements people talk no, about is, cool. of course, what people talk about is head no, mentality. Mm. He, you, you can't control people. But if you empower them with information, they will be able to take the right decisions that will help to save the day. So when you fail to do that, you're not helping them at all. Look, it is not even enough to exploit some loopholes in conspiracy theories and try to turn people's brains and say, is it even, ex you know, it is, it is funny. Since governors in Nigeria can't be lying, because uh, that, that they had COVID. Look at Brazil. The president said there is no COVID. Mm -hmm. Before we came on air this afternoon, mm -hmm. he, he, he tested positive. And more than 60,000 people have died. So what is he going to say about that? More Brazilian president. Misleading these people. Mm -hmm. Now, Cross River enemy withdraws services over the state handling of COVID. And that's, I think that's the enemy, the the enemy so guys are earlier. standing up to... They are saying to, that, to, look, to give Ayali. us... They are saying now to end this NCDC. Give us a test facility inside our states, our teaching hospital. Mm. You know, give us a test facility so that we don't need to go all the way to Abakaliki. And they are saying that look, this thing has not been transparently handled, and because of that, the lives of caregivers, the lives of doctors, have been endangered. For example, because you are giving the impression that, oh, this thing does not exist in the state. Many caregivers simply treat people 
like it's ordinary malaria, and in the process they get infected. So they need to be protected, provide the uh, PPEs that they need, create the test uh, center so that they can go right there, conduct those tests, and the people can know the true status, mm. the, their true COVID-19 mm -hmm. status in that state, instead of the rigged uh, <laughs> status that we are, we are having. Yeah, we don't, they don't want to spend money. They can spend money hiring 98, but they don't want to spend money to manage a, a health emergency. I mean, it's, it, it, it's, it's ridiculous. So, so we are... We are going religious now. The federal government has urged Christians and Muslims to intensify their prayers, and um, even about uh, indigenous in diaspora holds vigil for Governor Div uh, Mahi while recovering. <laughs> you know, it was a, it was one of the first things I said when COVID broke out. I said, you know, when you have a pandemic of this nature, there's no cure, everything like that. You pray, you do what you need to do, but you pray. The prayer is that those who are sick should recover. And that those who are in, in laboratories looking for solutions should also should help them. Yes, you know, they should also have the wisdom to be able to come we up don't with go the vaccine. No, 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 we've not. But that's what we need to get. As soon as we have the vaccine and we can and, and we can prevent ourselves from getting it, um, you know, we should be able to flatten the curve with I mean part really er eradicate it. But besides that, I would also make an advocacy. You see, while you're praying, you also ought to be working. Uh, we, we, we shouldn't wait. For, the federal government by now should have... This planning to, planning to, planning to does not help anybody. We were all here when the federal government went to Madagascar that has only one research facility to import their COVID uh, organics. Yeah? Meanwhile, Nigerian pharmacists have been begging for, for uh, attention at, at, at the very least to be able to come up with homegrown measures. The, the former minister of health said that, look, there is all this one that they're talking about hydroxychloroquine, they're talking about um, uh, rem, 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 remdesivir. If in the UK a particular drug had some effect, they'll come and announce it. If in the US they happen to come and announce it. He said the WHO is made up of all the nation, all the member nations. We too can do something meaningful and feed information to the WHO. So it's a two-way traffic. We, we, we shouldn't sit back and hope that whatever comes from, from overseas is the best. Mm. So we need to ask ourselves, Besides the help from China, besides the, uh, what we're hearing from the FDA and the US and the UK and so on, at the end of this crisis, what can Nigeria point to? To say that this is also what we... Doctors, yes. pharmacists... What can you point to? Let me give an example. Yes. I've said it before. When we talk about salt, iodized salt, we don't have to take iodized salt. But governments have a, a, a prevalence in, in, in goiter, this thing that's... That, you know, that's what's up on, 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 on. Mm -hmm. So they said, okay, iodine will deal with it. Let us look for a way to put iodine in something that people used to cook all the time. And they put it in salt. So that is the preventive way of dealing with goiter, for instance. Mm. Since none of these uh, um, 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 drug regimens can, can, can actually cure the disease, but will only build immunity to fight the, 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 the virus, mm. how can we also begin to look at immunity-boosting foods in light of the uh, as national staples, in light of the fact that we are confronted perennially by this, by outbreaks of diseases. Ebola comes and goes, Lassa comes and goes, mm -hmm. coronavirus has come. How do we create a culture around our feeding to be able to, to withstand, yes, yeah, to build our immunity? I we think need we, 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 need, we need to have that, that, that sort of orientation. Mm -hmm. Salit is lacking. Mm -hmm. Now, the uh, passengers are told that they are going to be flying by air, we are told to expect delay mm -hmm. tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, other changes are made. Um, a resumption and NCA is warning against non compliance of the safety regulations. Now, you can't go to Abuja. I can't have an appointment in Abuja tomorrow and want to, to travel to Abuja tomorrow. I should just forget it. They use the day. If your appointment is in the night, I can say travel. <laughs> because <laughs> you can I don't have off, assurance. You can, go, you can go to the airport at 7. seven what they are saying is you need a minimum of three hours. You know? And yeah. you know the culture before. Yeah. You know the delay before. Yes. That used to be in flight operation. Yeah, I was going to say that. So this automatically. A minimum of three hours. Just zero not uh, not uh, going to the airport like one hour to no. All of those uh, uh, rituals that you are going to go through, they take time. You know, they take time. So, and you are going to meet so many people at the airport. I was telling someone, I said, if there is an urgent need for me to travel, it can't even be in the 
next uh, few weeks because the rush what people have missed in Abuja and other places they want to uh, quickly mm. go there and pick it so there will be a mad rush mm. from tomorrow and it's not everybody that can and afford to you are enter. saying that okay the, the the minister has also said that they will no longer be serving meals on the mm. 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 meanwhile mm. meanwhile no no you see but you see it's still value you still get some measure of value for your money <laughs> <the> but best. <laughs> you see no, they will give you meat pie but the thing is, the rates, the, the um, air fares have gone up. Mm -hmm. Yet, you are going to be denied any form of uh, in-flight uh, refreshment and mm -hmm. all that that they used mm -hmm. to give you. Mm -hmm. But the sacrifices are huge too because mm -hmm. by the time you remove those aisle seats mm -hmm. to create uh, physical distancing, mm -hmm. you know, between uh, passengers, the the airlines, they are going to lose so yes, much yes, money. Yes, yes, yes. Abu Bakar mm -hmm. is calling us from Edo State. Thank you for joining us, Abu. Yeah, good evening, Babaji uh, Day, and the other gentlemen. Good, good evening, evening, Abu Bakar. Yeah, please, this corona stuff, mm. you guys should help us talk to Edo State government to do something about it. You know, we've never had a lockdown in Edo State. And the way the thing is rising here, nobody. If you go to the market, you see people just go about like nothing is happening. I, I don't get it. We, we, we are not taking it seriously. Nobody is supporting anything. We just tell it's all about election, re-election, mm -hmm. and nobody is doing anything about it. Mm -hmm. Please, we need somebody to help us talk to a state government to do something about the coronavirus issues here. I think we are number three in the country now, and uh, yes. nobody is. And the death rate you is go high. To the market states. and you know, you just see people go about like nothing is happening. Mm -hmm. Everywhere we have never had a lockdown here. I've been here since March and we've never had a lockdown. Please help us stop to so the government to do something about it. Somebody to mm enforce -hmm. something. They're watching. No, he, watching. He, he, he has made a very valid observation. If a state like Oshun, if the governor is doing lockdown, even identifying local governments where the thing is prevalent and implementing lockdown in those local governments. Why will a state that is so high up, you know, on the log, be no, behaving no. as if uh, no, no, nothing has happened? No, no, is more is, in is, concern is, with is his... battling uh, for his life. He's battling for that, um, mm. the, that seat and <laughs> that's paramount. He can't afford to take his eyes <laughs> off the ball. And but <laughs> it doesn't mean he's taking his... It does, even if it's for a few days, at least. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I. <laughs> so on on what on, on what advisory is INEC insisting that they will go ahead and hold elections? So you know. These no, it are, was this cons uh, constitutional. constitutional yes, it's good to. It's constitutional. It's good to cause a constitutional crisis. No, so I, I, to say. Just like the US, if you remember if they don't how George, George W. Bush mm. came to office. Yes. They had not finished counting the ballots in Florida, mm. but the the constitution says on so 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 day. Mm. A president of America would have must have emerged. Mm. So George W. Bush was leading by uh, just a little over 500 votes. They had to announce that mm. he was the winner, mm. just because that's what the Constitution mm. says. That uh, by that day, mm. a, a president must have mm. emerged. The, the fear is that if if this disease became extremely serious and they wouldn't be able to risk putting people, people's lives in danger, something would have to give, anyways. But if they, I think in, you witnessed what happened in uh, Benin, yeah. actually the primaries of the APC. Yes, yes. They achieve physical distancing yes, uh, yes. to a great yeah, extent. Yeah. If they yeah. can do it and everyone comes to the polling center with his uh, mask, mask, as INEC has insisted, I yes. think they Even implemented the Lagos that. Now is an offense. You can't come out They need to start Lagos arresting people because people are just mask. taking this thing as if it's a joke. Hmm. Some of them are using handkerchief, they will call that a mask. You know? <laughs> All right, moving forward now. Bandits yesterday struck again in Castilla State, killing at least 15 farmers at Yagamji village in Basara local government area. The farmers were said to be working on their farmland when bandits attacked them and killed them. Spokesman for the Castilla State Police, Gambo Isaiah, confirmed the incident, saying more than 200 bandits came on motorcycle armed with AK-47 rifles, pursuing the farmers, even to the forest, shooting and killing them. Today, this riot is still going on in Kassina. The bandits have they've gone AYA 
and it's as if there's no governance in Castena again, and um, the protection of life and property it cannot be guaranteed right now. In the president states, mm -hmm. some people will say that should be even be a priority that the president is from these states, that security should be beefed up. Um, it's not as if there is no governance taking place in Kassina. To say that would be unfair to mm, the, the government there. Mm, okay. Because the government there cannot and it's not Control, in charge of security. Police and army and so air force. Now the person who, whose responsibility it is to secure our people is the, is the president. The president knows when to deploy troops. He's in charge of the service chiefs and the inspector general of police. So it's the president who has to be on top of this, especially since it is in a state that it is happening. It's a massive embarrassment. And I expect the president to see it as such. That in your home state, they are killing people for fun. Hmm. As if killing people now is a sport. Bandits are taking over. There are Nigerians now in Casina State who have fled that state to go and take refuge in the Nigerian Republic. They do business in Casina. Once it's 6 p.m., they fled into uh, Nigeria the Nigerian Republic. Republic. It's something that puts me to shame that this is happening in my country. And when we want to deploy troops, we make so much noise about it because we, the, the armed forces now have put greater accent on politicking than substance. Now we are going to, we are deploying uh, uh, special forces to Kasina, to, to Nasrawa, to this. You know what shocked me? The day that the chief of army staff was in Kasina, in Faskari that he went to, do you know that that same day, they kill people in that local government. Ooh. Find out. <laughs> in that local he visited the place. That means the sea finish by these bandits and Boko Haram is, is, has reached an alarming level. They no longer even fear anyone. They are killing our people. I was in this Basari local government. I interviewed the chairman last year when I went to do a story about these bandits. I'm good there now. All of those places, look, 12 local governments, the district heads, they went to the Emir of Kassina and told him, we are going to leave, we are going to leave our domains. Now, if 200 bandits... We are going to leave our domains if you cannot, if, if, if our security cannot be guaranteed, mm. which is what happened in Bono now. Mm. Many of the Emirs of those towns... In no, no, they are they are yeah. operating yeah, from Maduguri. Uh, Maduguri. There will be hotels in Maduguri. Uh -huh. They will be have yes, their now. kingdom there. Emia. They will be doing that. No, for how long the Emia goes? I was not in town. Sir, <laughs> if more than two hundred bandits came on motorcycle, motorcycles <laughs> armed with AK forty-seven, two hundred, and <laughs> they passed through a certain route <laughs> to get to that place, <laughs> and after the operation, <laughs> they actually they escaped. They escaped. That's what is happening. Two hundred of them came in and escaped. And they were chasing people, killing people. Well, killing them. you know, still, the story is not complete. Though. They stole cattle and all that. Exactly. They because, because the story looks like, oh, they just came to kill yes, people for nothing. Yes, they came to steal yes, cattle. Yes. I am very sure that if you have access to the intelligence or security report of what happened, it is always graver than what we report or what we even know. Mm -hmm. So you would ask yourselves, you would ask yourself, is someone's conscience or someone's competence or someone's capacity to do the right thing, not called into sufficient question by the persons, um, by, by that very person, and uh, you know, to realize that protecting lives and property is my responsibility. Who is and this person? Sir? No, they are, the security chiefs, of course. What ideally, security chiefs? ideally, the governor ought to be able to deal with this issue squarely. But our law says that you are only governor in name. Mm -hmm. You cannot be you in charge of security. You function. cannot be, which is an aberration. Mm -hmm. So this discussion, may, uh, in the short term, we may, may be looking at send security people to go there to flush out the band and so on. But in the long term, it is not the solution. The solution is that the person who has the power, who is in, who is in the position to deal with this, you should be given the power to also do the job. Until you do that, these challenges will remain. 
I, I, you know, by, by now, by now, from Kaduna to Katina to Borno to Taraba to Adamawa, several states in northern Nigeria are seriously troubled. Perhaps, perhaps, we should go back to these localities and see whether local militia groups can, can you know, can, 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 can do something. Because the fact is that if we leave this thing to, uh, to apparatus of state alone, they will be easily overwhelmed. Yeah, well, they tried that now, and they, they've been slaughtering them. They, they tried them. Um, the former governor Zamfara created what you call Ensake, mm. and he bought rifles for them. Mm. But these guys that they, they are contending against, the they, they have uh, RPGs. Mm. <laughs> the army These are about, people who kill soldiers. The, oh, sir, the army talked so about one how can operation. the people that you bought guns for? They can They overwhelm them. So perhaps that operation the army talked about. I forgot what they call it. Nationwide parade or something like that. There was that people registered. And okay, said, that time that uh, they were checking very close. They around. should take it to the bandits and their forest and see whether you know they'll be able to put them in check. Quite no, frankly, I had speaking. the two of army staff telling soldiers that they should go into the forest to take on those boys because we're always reacting late. They will have killed people. You now see policemen and soldiers who mm. storm that village. Why are you storming the village after the deed had been done? Do you expect them to keep people and remain there? They won't remain there now. You are going there when the deed had, had been done. You are, provide, you are now providing security that you didn't provide for them. You are now providing for some of them who want to be taken to hospital. You should have been there to avoid these killings. Hmm. In the month of June alone, we lost more than 100 people in Casino State. All right. Evelyn is calling us from Abuja. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Please, I have a question for you guys there. All right. All right. The Chinese that came from China for, to treat COVID-19, where are they? <laughs> you know now that uh, it was later discovered <laughs> that they were not all uh, health Medical workers. workers. Some of them were construction workers. They came in on the invitation of a construction, a Chinese construction company, mm -hmm. CCEC. Mm -hmm. So they were, it wasn't all of them that were actually health. even doctors. Mm -hmm. We were told that they were going to help us to build molecular hmm. laboratories. Lumber. But when people asked the, um, the Minister of Health at one point that where are these people, he said, I don't know where they are. And please, don't ask me, don't again. Ask me that question again. Uh, that's, so, Evelyn, was... that's the answer the, for the, you. The way you see it is what we That's, 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 that's what we see too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can ask me another question. I'll be happy to answer. But that one, don't ask me again, Evelyn. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. They brought people and before they brought them, and I saw that person to briefing. receive them. Oh. Yes. I saw Boss Mustafa, I saw all the mm -hmm. people that said... It was carried live. NMA even came, but no, we they don't said want they don't, we don't want this. We don't want, and they were even justifying it mm -hmm. for us just to know that, look, these guys, are, they are not from... Uh, from yeah, because from, we were told that they came to help us in the area of molecular testing. Oh, we are still weak. Uh, <laughs> that we and to look to at assist our, us. Our, 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 our work plan and to assess it and to tell us we are having problems. Now, we are doing having this country problems. like this. <laughs> Hmm? <laughs> we will know them in the fullness of time. <laughs> All I know that God has a bigger plan for Nigeria hmm. than many of us see. And in the fullness of time, the plan of God will unravel. Because I feel like preaching today. Yeah. 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 The plan <laughs> of God will unravel yes, in our so. country and mm. our country will be truly great again. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Maybe it won't happen in my generation. Ah, you know, the problem, you see, I, I fear for our children. Okay. You know why I'm saying that? A lot of my age mates mm. and people younger than me by mm. like 10 years, mm. they've already meshed with the older generation yes. who have ruined our country. Mm. So they are part that of the ruling class. They're the already ruling. part of the ruling class. Yeah. So I see myself as already part of that, uh, uh, generation. that generation. Mm. So if I say that uh, my generation has failed Nigeria, it's because People who are my age mates are in government, and some of them are worse than the old uh, uh, people they are, that they met there. Yes, man. They are, so, the way they. Uh, when we see hope for Nigeria, it is that hope 
we will be exemplified by people who are far younger than us. Mm. Their energy More is positive and God has given them brains. You mm. see great things happening mm. across the world mm. being done by Nigerians. And yeah. you ask yourself that if they had the opportunity mm. in their own country, won't they turn our country around? Because around. the way it is, we are just we are just like a joke in the Committee of Nations. I'm telling you. Sorry, just like a joke. Welcome back. And, um, my <laughs> to and please let the Tamino. prayer not stop. I know you are a pastor. The, is it Tamino? That prayer has mm -hmm. to continue because yes. we need a better Nigeria. Yes, we need, yes, a, better we need a better Nigeria. Maybe you generation. started making babies now. Mm. Those children. <laughs> the name now. Those children that will come <laughs> off your. Uh, my life. Your, your, yes. You know? They need. We need to live a better Nigeria for them. Otherwise, yes. they will curse us. Yes. Mm. We need to live a better what Nigeria for them. Mm. So let that prayer not stop. Mm. You and your wife, since mm. you started making babies. Me, me have resigned. <laughs> I, I have resigned from making babies. <laughs> I we have to you. pray. <laughs> the boy's name is Tamunoye Johan. Tamunoye God's own. God's own. Mm. From Calabari Man. It's God's Okreka. 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 Yes. Okay. Mm. Okreka. Mm. God's okay. own. Yeah. We will end it on the final Nigeria note. Nigeria is God's own. Yes. Okay. Amen. Okay. And that Bible says the glory of the latter shall be greater than that. Hallelujah. Amen. So shall it be. Yes. I feel like the glory of this country. <laughs> See you, Abaku. Welcome back. Thank you. I'm Pastor BKO of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. Welcome back. <laughs> and that's our package I'm, today. I'm Tell receiving us tomorrow. <laughs> Pastor Desola and the rest of them at our season. Join us tomorrow for another episode of the program. You can also watch Journalist Hangout on our platform showing on the screen. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. Our feedback channel is Journalist Hangout at TVC News. Talk TV. I'm Ayodili Uzuagun. Bye for now. See you guys tomorrow.